I hope you've all been enjoying Lost Belt 2, but we still got one new servant left to talk about. Hello everyone, Sobroni of G&A Reviews here, with a servant spotlight for the only Saber who can screw the rules because he has Valkyries, Sigurd. We'll be examining his stats and skills, as well as going over pointers on how to utilize him effectively and an overall grade, comparing him to how he stacks up to the other 5-star servants. Now, onto Sigurd's stats. Sigurd has a max HP of 13,975 and a max attack of 12,465. For a 5 star Saber, he has slightly below average HP, but incredibly high attack, tied for the best attack alongside Proto Arthur. As for how Sigurd compares to all the other 5 star servants, his HP is about average, while his attack is one of the highest in the game. Sigurd has a very strong stat spread, being one of the best damage dealers, while also having a pretty decent HP stat as well. Taking a look at his skills, Sigurd's first skill is Primordial Rune Warrior Rank B, which increases his crit strength for 3 times or 3 turns between 50 and 100% depending on level. His second skill is Dragonkind Modification Rank EX, which increases his Buster Card effectiveness for 1 turn between 30 and 50% depending on level, and also applies Guts 1 time for 3 turns, reviving him with 1000 HP. And finally, his last skill is Crystallization of Wisdom Rank A, which increases the crit star drop rate of an ally for one turn between 50 and 100% depending on level, and also applies Nullified Debuff for one turn. As for his passives, Sigurd has Magic Resistance Rank A, which increases his debuff resist by 20%, Riding Rank A, which increases his quick card effectiveness by 10%, and Divinity Rank B, which applies damage plus 175 to all of his attacks. Moving on to his deck and Noble Phantasm, Sigurd has a Buster Arts deck with Quick Arts Arts Buster Buster and a Buster Noble Phantasm. His Noble Phantasm is Bulwark Gram. It deals significant damage to a single enemy with between a 600 and 1000% damage modifier depending on level, and it also deals additional damage to dragon enemies with between a 150 and 200% damage modifier depending on overcharge. Taking a closer look at his cards, we see that his quick card hits 4 times, his arch card hits 3 times, his buster hits twice, and his extra attack hits 5 times. He has an NP gain rate of 0.62% and a star rate of 10%. He has some decent NP gain from the good hit counts on his arts and extra card, but just average star generating due to only having one quick card. If you're planning on ascending and leveling your Sigurd, you should know that for his ascensions, he requires a total of 18 Dragon Fangs, 10 Horseshoes, 9 Magic Lamps, and 5 Reverse Dragon Scales. Dragon Fangs have the highest drop rate at Eridu in Babylonia with 62%, but they're more efficiently farmed at the Island of Wyverns in Okeanos, where they have a 51% drop rate. Horseshoes have a 44% drop rate at the Land of Void in Camelot. Magic Lamps are best farmed at the Jail in Salem with a 19% drop rate, and Dragon Scales have a 12% drop rate at Nipper in Babylonia. For skill leveling, Sigurd is going to need 15 Horseshoes, 36 Dragon Fangs, 11 Dragon Scales, and 24 Giant Rings, Per skill. Giant Rings have a 40% drop rate at the Giant's Flower Garden in Lost Belt 2. There really isn't a shortage of Buster Sabres, but I guess one more doesn't really hurt. So what does Sigurd do to separate himself from a very crowded field? Well, for one thing, his stats are absolutely amazing. He has a solid amount of HP, respectable NP gain and star generating for his deck, and above all else, he has one of the highest attack stats around. Sigurd isn't particularly lacking in any major stat category, and his high attack sets him up to be a really good beat stick. But as always, it is skills, not stats, that makes the servant. Sigurd's skill set is highly offensive. His first skill, Primordial Rune, gives him a huge buff to his crit damage. A 100% buff to crit damage is on par with Emiya's Hawkeye, making it one of the best raw crit buffs any servant has access to. The cooldown is also very short, considering the power level of the skill at only 5 turns. However, do be aware that the crit buff only applies for 3 hits or 3 turns, whichever comes first. So if you don't use this skill carefully and strategically, you can sometimes burn it off too quickly and have to wait a long while for it to recharge. 
Sigurd isn't just about crits though, he also has his second skill, Dragonkind Modification, which is just a straight up mana burst that also gives guts. As always, Mana Burst is a tremendously strong skill that can really supercharge your damage for a turn. This is especially the case for single target servants, so it should never be underestimated. But on top of that, the Guts effect is also handy as it gives Sigurd a form of hard defense to make him a little bit more tanky. On the downside though, his Guts isn't the best in the world, only lasting 3 turns, and the cooldown on this skill is insanely long, much longer than the average Mana Burst, so it must be used wisely. And finally, Sigurd has Crystallization of Wisdom, a skill that increases an ally's star drop rate significantly and also grants them debuff immunity. Naturally, Sigurd can use this on himself too, specifically if you're going to be using his high hit count Noble Phantasm, but more often than not, this skill is best saved for the star generator on your team, and unfortunately, the debuff immunity has very niche usage as it only lasts for a single turn and it isn't AoE. As for skill leveling when it comes to Sigurd, I highly recommend leveling up Primordial Rune first so that you have better uptime on your crits, followed by Mana Burst for more NP damage, and then Star Generating buff last. However, if you don't plan on using a crit team with Sigurd, then you can level Dragonkind Modification before Primordial Rune. Sigurd's Noble Phantasm should look familiar. It's a single target buster nuke that does extra damage against dragon enemies. Basically, it's just a single target version of Siegfried's Noble Phantasm. It will do an ungodly amount of damage to any dragon enemies that you face, of which there are a few, but not all that many in terms of servants. Thankfully though, even without the anti-dragon buff, Sigurd's Noble Phantasm still does do good damage thanks to that mana burst. And honestly, I feel like I could just say Sigurd does good damage and end the spotlight because that just about sums up everything there is to say about him. He is far from the most mechanically advanced servant. Despite not having a charisma or any other high uptime attack buffs, Sigurd's card damage is still quite good just from his deck structure and his raw stats alone. But where he really shines is in his crit damage. If you're capable of building a crit team around Sigurd, then I highly suggest doing so. As with Primordial Rune active, his buster crits can melt enemy lancers. Sigurd is by no means self-sufficient, but he also is capable of producing a decent amount of crit stars for himself if worse comes to worse. And as a single target servant with mana burst, his Noble Phantasm damage hurts making him more suitable as a boss killer. But while Sigurd can absolutely be a formidable DPS Saber, he has several glaring weaknesses. For one thing, cooldowns are a huge drawback for him. The 7 turn cooldown on his mana burst in particular is devastating. Because Sigurd has no other damage buffs and no NP interlude, his Noble Phantasm is far weaker without that mana burst. Speaking of which, while his Noble Phantasm damage with mana burst is respectable, it still pales in comparison to every other single target 5 star saber. Much like Napoleon, Sigurd suffers from being in the class filled to the brim with OP servants. But unlike Napoleon, Sigurd really has no other niche to fall back on. He isn't as well balanced as some of the other sabers who can provide offense and support. He lacks NP damage compared to the other sabers. And once Mordred and Proto Arthur receive their buffs, he also falls behind them in the crit saber department. Which brings us to the last and possibly biggest issue with Sigurd. He has no star gather buff. So his ability to land crits is extremely inconsistent and overly dependent on RNG, which is not good when there are a lot of other sabers who have ways of easily setting themselves up for crits. Team building for Sigurd can go one of two ways, high burst damage or crit DPS. I suggest going with crits because that's what Sigurd's kit is built around, in which case he desperately needs to be paired with servants who can generate stars for him or improve his star gather rate. To that end, Brynhilda, Fuma, and Lancer Ryko are all good choices. Bryn is fittingly the best possible support for Sigurd as she grants him a star weight and crit damage buff on a short cooldown, 
making him a lot more consistent. Plus, she can improve his star generating as well. Lancer Raikou works in a very similar fashion, being able to buff his star generating and also his non-crit damage. And Fuma is one of the best free-to-play star generators since he can produce a ton of stars and he gives Sigurd some better hard defense. If you're going the pure burst damage route with Sigurd, then I recommend using servants who can either stack up a lot of offensive buffs or they can help him proc his anti-dragon damage like George, Maeve, or Nightingale. George is a bit gimmicky, but since his Noble Phantasm applies the dragon trait to enemies, it does allow him to massively improve Sigurd's damage as well as protect him. Nightingale has an extremely powerful mana burst to use while Sigurd's is on its long cooldown, and Maeve makes an excellent support for male servants with her 40% low cooldown attack buff. Sigurd's Bondcraft Essence is True Wisdom of Ice. It buffs the Buster Card effectiveness of all allies by 10% and their crit damage by 15%. This isn't the best on a selfish servant like Sigurd. If you want to build him for crits, then make sure you use craft essences that can buff both your crit damage and your buster damage like Victor from the Moon, Joint Recital, The Sailor in White, or Starry Nights. If however you would rather focus on high burst damage, then just using craft essences that buff buster and NP is more than enough, like Limited Zero, Black Grail, Collidal Ruby, or Aerial Drive. In the future, be on the lookout for Hero on the Beach, which drops this summer. It's a good craft essence for making your crit stronger and more consistent as it produces stars every turn while also buffing your buster and crit damage. Overall, Sigurd is a decent crit DPS saber with very high attack. He is capable of high damage numbers via his primordial rune skill, and he's also capable of good burst damage due to his mana burst and strong single target Noble Phantasm. He's especially good if you're up against any dragon enemies. However, he does struggle tremendously with consistency due to his lack of a star weight skill and his subpar star generating. His damage, while decent on its own, also falls far short of the other single target sabers, and due to his long cooldowns, lack of utility, and future power creep, he struggles to find a good niche to excel in. Therefore, Sigurd gets a C plus from me. I think Sigurd is fairly underwhelming on his own, which is especially noticeable in an otherwise stacked Saber class. But if you can provide him with decent support, especially from Bryn, he can work out quite well. And those are my thoughts on Sigurd. I think he is in definite need of some buffing to catch up on a lot of the power creep, but he is by no means unusable or anything. But in any case, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and consider subscribing if you really enjoyed the video. Join the party over at our Discord, follow us on Twitter, and chill with us on Twitch. And I'll see you all in the next Servant Spotlight. So we're only out. Later.